All right. Uh, as was said, I am in the unenviable position of standing between you and drinks, so I'll try to be quick. Um, appreciate everybody who stayed, and also special thanks to, to Frank and the entire AM Hub uh, team who, who put this event on today. It's, it's fantastic. Um, as was mentioned, I'm Ian Cronin. I'm with the World Economic Forum. Uh, and, and today I'd, I'd like to use the short amount of time that I have to, to cover three things. One, if, if you'll indulge me for a minute, I'll give you some background on the World Economic Forum and where we're coming at this issue from. Uh, two, I think why we think additive manufacturing and, and the broader ecosystem of advanced manufacturing is, is so critical to the future where the world is headed. Uh, and then finally, what we're hearing from leaders around the world on, on what is needed to make sure that we actually achieve the future that I think we're all hoping for. We've heard a lot of really interesting things throughout the day today. I know I've actually learned a ton, um, and so hopefully I can help tie together some of those pieces. Um, for those of you who, who don't know the World Economic Forum, we are an organization based in Switzerland, founded in 1971 by German professor Klaus Schwab. Uh, we are the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation. Um, what that basically means is everything we do, we try to take a multi-stakeholder approach, so bringing businesses like yourself, but also academia, civil society into the conversation to, to achieve our mission of improving the state of the world. Now, for, for those of you who do know the forum, you probably are most familiar with our annual meeting in Davos every year. Um, for good reason, uh, January is our 50th anniversary. But it's actually a very small percentage of what we do on a daily basis and a yearly basis. Um, our, our chairman recently described the forum as a, uh, the, the goal of being a global operating system for driving positive change in the world. And, and I think it's an apt description because similar to a digital platform, we try to take a platform approach in, in how we're, we're dealing with these challenges that, and, and opportunities the world is facing as a result of, of industries like your own. Um, so when I, when I talk about a platform, really we, we often describe it in four A's, and I'll, I'll try not to forget them at the end of a long day. Um, but the first one is anticipation. So how can we communicate with all of you to understand where the world is going and how we need to react? Um, where are the technologies succeeding? And you know, as, as Ronan talked about earlier today, where, where do they still need work to, to make sure that they actually achieve their promise? Um, the second is aggregation. So how do, we, how do we bring together these initiatives that are happening in, in pockets all over the world um, and actually create an, an aggregating effect of, of impact? Um, the third is accelerating. So taking, using the forums platform to help drive the speed and scale at which these changes are happening. And then finally, it's amplifying. So we want to, to use our global megaphone to, to take conversations that are happening like those in the, that happen today in the room and actually then bring that to a global audience. At the forum, there's 18 platforms of, of activity. I, I help lead the work on advanced manufacturing and production. Um, I, I just am showing this slide here in particular because where we want the world to go and the, the values that we see within in the future of production, these are the key spaces. And I think we, we've actually in some way, shape, or form touched on them today. And that's really you know, making sure that when we're talking about additive manufacturing, that it doesn't continue to be a, a, a as, as previous technologies have, have scaled around the world, that they often are not inclusive. So how do we make these technologies inclusive? And, and actually, I, I heard uh, during my breakout session earlier today, it was fantastic to hear sort of the around the world journey of, of where, where additive is going and how different segments of, of the world are, are operating in this space. Um, how do we make it sustainable? How do we achieve the promise of that? What's missing? Um, and, and, and bringing this all together. So I think these are, are some of the key values that we try to pursue in, in all of the initiatives that we do as part of our platform. I, I, I probably don't need to tell you that your industry is complex. I think you guys know that. I think you know that it's happening um, at an incredibly fast and rapid pace. Um, on the, I guess, the, the right side of the screen up there, though, is what we call one of our transformation maps. And I think it's interesting because it also shows you not how, only how complex it is, but how interconnected. Advanced manufacturing and, and additive manufacturing in particular sits at, at the center of, of so much activity. Um, and, and it was interesting, I think it was um, Espen's uh, presentation this morning from Avaldi talking about you know, the changes in supply chain. And, and it is, it's incredibly interesting where this is going because, as I think you said, you know, FedEx isn't going to be very happy about where this is, is headed. However, we're also seeing UPS, you know, another massive logistics giant, has 
teamed up and partnered with Fast Radius, which is a 3D printing company based uh, in the US, to actually take advantage of that transformation, to change the way we look at supply chains, to, I think they called it their, their end of runway model of delivering these parts extremely fast. And these are the types of things I think we need to, to look at and get excited about and see how can we drive these as a community. Um, not only are there challenges and opportunities, but I think I, I put this up here just to also show that manufacturing, additive manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, sits at the heart of the global economy. I mean, if you look at some of these stats up here, these, th this group of people are the ones who can either help make sure that the world is, is a positive uh, place in the future, or are we going to continue to contribute to ways that aren't as sustainable, that aren't driving in inclusive growth uh, at, at, from where we go. And so I think as we have these discussions, it's always helpful to keep in mind just how impactful our industry is. To, the, to that end, I think it's also uh, important to note here that as we, we think through the, the challenges that we're all seeing, from, from my perspective and, and the, the World Economic Forum's perspective, there are certain challenges that, that are cross-cutting. So whether we're talking about additive manufacturing, whether we're talking about um, AI in manufacturing, um, new materials, all of these things often are, are, are coming down to, we hear the, the same conversations. Where's the workforce? I, I was talking to someone out here, of, you know, one of the main bottlenecks is having enough people who have the right skills. How do, we, how do we take that? How do we make sure that as we do grow that base, the existing workforce isn't completely displaced, that we're able to raise that bar too? Um, the, the sustainability piece I've already touched on, it's, it's my focus area of work in, in addition to our regional deep dives, so uh, I'm especially interested in it. But there's so many other components. Data, I mean, the massive amounts of data we're all generating every single day in what we do has, has enormous potential. But not only for us, I think everyone has sort of heard the statistic about, you know, 99% of data captured isn't utilized. True, but it's not just about the data we have internally. But creating data alliances that actually allow us to, to capitalize on, on collective uh, advantages that we have by working together in certain spaces. And that's tricky because if, if you, you know, start giving away some of your IP, sharing IP, sharing data, are you giving away part of your competitive advantage? And so how do we navigate those, those spaces of, of providing uh, benefit to one another while, while understanding that we're still a business and we need to, to under, maintain our area of, of the market. So the, the part I'm most excited about of, of my conversation today um, is, is this, this piece, the, the future. Where are we going? Um, and this, this really comes back to what we're hearing from leaders around how. So how do we have a sustainable future? How do we make sure that we, when you're talking about collaborations, what, what does that look like? Um, I think there's, there's two this is probably a massive oversimplification, but there's two truths that I keep coming across. And it's, it's one, no matter which industry you're in, we're all facing similar global challenges that are shaping the way we have to do business. Global trade tensions, um, resource scarcity, rising costs, um, climate change. These are things that we all have to face. The second truth is that none of us can address them by ourselves. We have to find a way to work together where we can and identify those spaces, those, um, we call them pre-competitive collaborations, to, to actually drive change and, and take advantage of, of the regional competitive advantages. I think I, I was talking with uh, Frank um, in, in, we were in Munich recently, and I was, I was just astounded by how this community, particularly in Copenhagen, Denmark at large, I think is, is the global leader on collaborative action, you know, among competitors, you know, m um, among and between industries, you guys have a ability to teach lessons to the other places in, in the rest of the world of how this can work. And, and some of that might be the, in, in the DNA of the business community here, but some of that is also just the rest of the world needs to understand that you can find these spaces, that you can drive change by working together. So, what the, we've been called to do is, is create a space that, that helps do that. Um, the big piece of work that I'm, I'm involved with driving right now is our global network of advanced manufacturing hubs. And this is really a, a way that we're trying to take some of these regional success stories and, and make them a part of the global conversation. Uh, and and it's, it, 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 there's a, a couple different parts of this. And that's one, allowing us to highlight and showcase 
you know, communities like this, where you have people who are doing amazing things, where there's, there's a collective of, of working together and collaborating to make the entire community more successful and looking for those, how do I, how do I get that extra, you know, tenth of a percentile that's going to put me at the top of the, the competitive landscape? And then also be able to learn from other regions around the world. How are they approaching the, the skills challenge? How are they approaching, uh, you know, when we've, we've talked earlier today about certifying parts. How, how are other areas looking at doing this? The policies that are encouraging advanced manufacturing, added manufacturing industries. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm exceptionally pleased uh, that uh, I'm also fortunate to be able to announce that with the AM hub here in, uh, in, in Copenhagen, we are, are collaborating to officially launch the Copenhagen Advanced Manufacturing Hub as part of our network. So I'm, I'm exceptionally looking forward to, to being able to continue to work with all of you as we try to highlight and showcase the work all of you are doing in, in this region and connect it with some of these other places. You know, we're, we're launching them in, in, in uh, we have one in Michigan, in Queensland, in China, in, in India. The, these are, are really spaces where we can highlight and showcase how Denmark is, is setting itself apart in the, the advanced manufacturing space. Um, there's some, some more things on this slide about the, the, the benefits and sort of our value proposition of why this is important. But I think from the forum's perspective also, we have, we have other initiatives that we'd like to help connect all of you to as well. So there, there's a, a forum program, uh, some of you may have heard it, it's called the Global Lighthouse Network where we try to identify the most advanced factories in the world um, who've, who've managed to integrate multiple technologies from additive um, to, to how they do their big data analytics to, to connecting with AI. And I think that we, through the, the regional hubs, we have an opportunity to take existing lighthouses and plug them in and share their learnings. But I'm also certain that there are lighthouses in Denmark that, that can apply and, and could potentially join this network and even further highlight the amazing work that's happening here. Um, there's also, we have a, a technology pioneers community of really the, the cutting edge. And again, there's, there's probably some potential technology pioneers sitting in this room. So I think this, this collaboration that we're working on with the AM Hub, I think, is a fantastic opportunity to share the learnings that, that are happening here, highlight the amazing work, and then allow this community to see how other parts of the world are approaching this, this challenge. So I know that uh, we're, we're getting very close. I probably talked much faster than I had planned. Um, but uh, I'll pause there, and, and I can take any questions, or I can let you guys move on to, uh, to the next phase. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Ian. Thank we you. appreciate that. Yeah, One question uh, I have for you going on there. So, I mean, I can understand the inclusiveness part of it, this idea of uh, establishing a network, make, sharing knowledge, making mm -hmm. sure everybody comes from a certain base or can actually share knowledge. Anyway, so, so. how does the World Economic Forum plan to make additive manufacturing or help make additive, additive manufacturing more sustainable? That's a fantastic question. Because um, you talked I, a lot about you mm -hmm. want to do that. How are you going to do that? Yeah, I think one of the key things that we try to do is find the best practices. Who's leading in this space? And then how can we, we identify ways of scaling that? So when, when we're talking about uh, you know, some of the presentations we just had here of, of new ways of, you know, Carbon was just talking about what they're doing. Well, what can we take from how they've gone on their journey and apply that at a broader scale that others can learn from it? You know, I think the, the challenge with sustainability in general is it's often, even, even in some of the conversations that I've had with people, it's a lip service conversation. Yes, you know, we can no longer wait on sustainability. It's here, we have to do it. But I think what we also need is tangible uh, benchmarks that drive the, the conversation forward, and I think that's what we hope to learn. So you are, are you establishing those benchmarks? We are, we are working yeah, with our community to do so. So hopefully we'll be able to publish ones that are, are come out of the industry conversation. So I, the forum, it, it, we're not in a position where we, we set the benchmarks, but we can help set up the conversations that then whether that becomes an ISO benchmark or that just becomes an industry standard, um, that's the, what we're trying to drive forward. Okay, great. Does anyone have any questions for Ian from the World Economic Forum while we've got such an important gentleman here tonight? I have one more question then. The yeah. I'm both quite interested that I was actually saying, am I getting this right? You're actually trying to you're trying to, you're trying to uh, convince um, groups of, um, of companies such as this to work with their competitors 
in order to be more competitive. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, it's, it's the, I mean, it goes back, there was the, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a startup to help startups start up. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit in the, in the same vein, but in a very serious way in that there are spaces where you have a, a there, it, there's not a cost incentive for you to do it on your own, or you can't, even sustainability. There's no way that a single company can move the dial on global sustainability. But if we can find a way to share that cost, now you can actually make the progress that we need to. And it's not just in sustainability, it's in the data sharing, it's in all these other these, um, the areas that are siloed until now. Brilliant. Thanks very much, yeah, and I really you. appreciate it. Thank appreciate you very much indeed. Thanks very much, everyone. <laughs>